Now, as you're beginning to explore what CRPS is about, you're going to be tempted to visit the internet and you're going to read dozens of very scary websites that are posted on the web about complex regional pain syndrome. And there's a couple of things you really need to know about this. The first is that um, there are some legitimate sources of information um, from pain societies that advocate for patients, such as the RSDSA and the APS, the American Pain Society. But there's a lot of people who have posted their own websites about their own scary experiences with CRPS, and that is not going to reflect the reality for your child. Those patients who put their own um, views of CRPS up there are not professionals. They have a, a, an N of one anecdotal bias that reflects their own personal experience. They're often angry uh, and, and use the web to ventilate their anger. And more than anything else, they're reflecting on the experience of an adult with complex regional pain syndrome and not a child. Because children have much better outcomes with CRPS than adults will ever be able to enjoy. So the first piece of advice I always, always like to give parents is to stay off the web and find out information from legitimate sources. That's very important. Now the next thing is that many individuals don't live near children's hospitals or large children's medical centers where there's expertise for dealing with complex regional pain syndrome. They may not live near a pediatric pain management program, but they do live near many adult pain management programs. Adult pain management programs can be found in every large city and most small cities. And adult pain management programs are very interventionally oriented. That is to say, their first tool will often be doing injections and nerve blocks. Now, while injections and certain nerve blocks are useful in some cases of CRPS, they're not necessary in most cases of CRPS. And sometimes they will actually make the complex regional pain syndrome worse or actually decrease a child's level of function when what we're working for is increasing function. The, whole, the, the, the base of complex regional pain syndrome management is physical therapy and occupational therapy supported by certain medications and psychotherapy. Doing nerve blocks is the last resort, but so many times I see patients whose first stop has been in, the, in an adult pain center and the first things that have been done is the performance of many nerve blocks just as these oftentimes well-meaning practitioners would do with their adult patients with complex regional pain syndrome. But childhood or juvenile CRPS is different than adult CRPS. And we who take care of it are much less reliant on doing nerve blocks, which are expensive. They can be painful. They usually in children require general anesthesia. They have to be done multiple times. And for all of those reasons, we try to avoid doing those things in children unless we're really pushed because other modalities have not worked. So I would avoid going to an adult pain management center if possible, or at least being armed with the information about how juvenile or pediatric CRPS is best treated rather than adult CRPS. There are also a number of therapies that are available and oftentimes promoted very aggressively by their inventors or patent holders um, that have not yet met the um, the um, approval of the medical community. They haven't passed muster in terms of scientific proof of effectiveness. There are things such as hyperbaric oxygen treatment, which is advocated by some, um, fancy methods of electrical stimulation of the limb uh, involved with complex regional pain syndrome, um, the application of topical ointments consisting of a cocktail of different drugs when there's no evidence that those drugs can actually be absorbed through the skin, etc. So certainly those methods have not been proven to be effective and generally speaking are not reimbursable by insurance companies. So will cost the parents a great deal of money without any benefit to the child at all. There are also some new methods of treating CRPS that are experimental that are still unproven, that are coming down the pipeline that may look very promising. Um, but there are also individuals who have set up clinics around the country and in Mexico who exploit these therapies 
and um, when there's no proof that they're effective and they're very expensive, things such as stem cell therapy has no basis in the treatment of CRPS at this point in time. Ketamine coma, putting individuals in a deep coma with the drug ketamine um, is, is practiced by private practitioners in some places in Europe, Eastern Europe and Mexico at a great profit when there's no evidence that it's effective and it can be actually very, very dangerous. So certainly there are, there are techniques of treating lots of ailments that humans have, including CRPS and cancer that are on the fringe of modern medicine that I would certainly not subject a child to.